Hey, that's full power. That is crazy neat. Hope I can get this to be the clip that shows up on the video. I gotta stop there. Okay, this is another test video on the components for a fish shocker I'm building. I'm just trying to run it through its paces to see what it does under certain circumstances. But before I start, I wanted to show this. This is a router speed controller. It doesn't come with these two components hooked onto it, but I'm showing it because I noticed a lot of people are doing experiments with MOTS. And this particular one here has a plug-in outlet that I have my MOT plugged into right now. And it enables you to power, and uh, not power, but control the amount of current that's flowing through your primary. And it does it very well. It handles everything a MOT can take without even getting hot. I put um, cooling fans on mine because I use it on my cell. But I just wanted to show you that because I've seen uh, a lot of people have been doing testing by overloading wires and things like that. These things are very good for that. So, having said that, I'm going to show what I've got going on right now. I have three capacitors hooked up in parallel to this little Jacob's Ladder here. And one leg of my secondary is just a copper bar that's stuck into the mot. Seems to be working fine. There's a, a well all the way across the top here that looks like they're all connected. I think that's an induction well. I don't have any uh, way of reading the amperage on this right now. So we're just going to be viewing the sparks. not acting like a Jacob's Ladder and I think it's got a lot to do with the fact that I got three capacitors connected in parallel. Let's try that again. Wow, I didn't like the way that was acting. I'm at 80 Celsius already. So we've seen how it acts like that with the three capacitors in parallel. Extremely hot sparks but because of their frequency, they're not allowing the Jacob's Ladder to work. There may be a voltage issue here, too. I don't know all that much about electronics. I, I know quite a bit. But So what I'm going to be doing next is using this little rig here that I got. It's an old compass. Um, I have a couple of these laying around the house. By the way, these things are incredibly useful for um, kind of like... Uh, craft hemostats they're better than C clamps any day I use these things to clamp hoses tight when I'm draining electrolytes and all that stuff they pinch really powerfully too they got a real strong pinch and these ones here got this nice little plastic dielectric separation there I may get brave enough to hold this thing and dial in the difference of my gap so this is what I'm gonna hook up and I'm gonna disconnect these capacitors and we're gonna see what happens I also got this out of a microwave and it says on here 120 Celsius 250 volts 15 amps so I'd imagine that it's a thermal cutoff switch I may hook this onto my mop I don't know if anyone has tried using one of these yet if you have let me know what you think about these things it's got this is my next test I'm down to 44 Celsius already luckily Feels very warm to the touch. Just to kind of give a verbal on what 44 Celsius is feeling like. I don't know what's going to happen here. This is without the capacitors. Even though you see them sitting there, they're only mounted to the platform. I have no idea what's about to happen. I am at about maybe a millimeter gap. Here goes. Whoa. Interesting. Nowhere near as hot a spark. Perhaps the shape of my Jacob's ladder just isn't good. And interestingly, I'm still at 43 Celsius. 
the last couple of tests you've seen with the caps heated this thing up. This thing would have been on fire by now. That's interesting. Not having the caps is making my secondary run way cooler. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, that's with just the switch on. And that's hot. That's all the way on. And I'm getting hot pretty quick, so I'm going to stop doing that. Wow. I don't, I don't know if you can see that in the video, but I get a brilliant green light because of the copper. The copper seems to be getting red hot. I don't know if you can see that green or not. It's eerie green light. I know this video ain't picking that up. It's got such crappy visual. That is totally cool. But you will find out. Power on. Just by turning on the power. Whoa, that was full power right there. I'm going to tune this. That's extremely close. Nice little blue one. We'll turn it all the way up. Pretty neat. I'm up to 53 Celsius there. I wonder if this fan blowing will mess with my ion path at all. Let's see. Doesn't seem to care at all. Really neat little arc there. Yeah, the fan's starting to affect it just slightly, I think. I'm going to turn that back away. About 43 Celsius on the mop. Try one more full power. Pretty cool, brilliant white light, man. That is so awesome. That is really cool. I'm not looking at that, just so you know. I'm watching the computer screen. I'm not completely stupid. Showing 80 was the highest on the carbons. That probably ain't a very good read at all. I'm at about 80 Celsius in my mop, so I gotta stop there. I need to open the door to let this place air out a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna adjust my carbon arc and then initiate it. Should be safe to touch this. Let me see if we can get a good long spark here. Get that fan out of there. And it's sustaining. That's full power. That is crazy neat. Hope I can get this to be the clip that shows up on the video. I gotta stop there. My friend Mascow informed me if you smell my you're too hot, so that's the end of that show. No, I did not mean to make that rhyme like a jackass. It really stinks in here good. I'm at 88. I got up to 90 Celsius on my pot there. I think I got enough footage for us to look at, see what's going on there. I don't want to push this mop until I get uh, Mascal's idea incorporated. He suggested sinking this thing in a bath of mineral oil which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to end this.